Man, I love your pillow. That's awesome right there. <laughs> well, holy shit. Uh, I usually wing this thing, but uh, first of all, thanks to the uh, people involved with this for, uh, I like to give people the finger a lot, and you can't give the world a finger better than having Stephen Colbert show up for your 21 years of hard work. Uh, I'm honored to be here tonight. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate all the other class that's here in the 2015 Songwriters Hall of Fame. I feel really honored and humbled to be here. Uh, before you stands a songwriter tonight that if I wouldn't have had the vehicle of a hardworking artist to uh, go out and record my songs and myself, I would have still got these songs to somebody else. I would have said I would have been uh, working hard. But uh, know this, uh, years ago it was a lot easier. Uh, we got paid good, songwriters got paid, and I think of a guy that works at you know, a restaurant, he busts tables, he goes home every night, he moves to Nashville, he works really hard. He writes finally one golden song that's very important to him. And that royalty money that comes in for that guy is very special and it'll change his life and it might affect his whole family from now on. And, uh, and you have a warrior standing here tonight that will fight for every dollar if you guys put me on the point. If you just say, hey, we need your help. I'll be there to fight for you side by side with everybody. Now, I can't, I obviously can't help a lot right now because I have a night job. So we'll get, we'll get over that someday though, right? But I want you to know how important that I think that the uh, songs are the blood life of any artist out there. They can't make it without a freaking song. That's what I think. All right. There's many award shows out there for artists and uh, entertainer of the year, album of the year, single of the year, video of the year, all that stuff we won. None of that means anything to me tomorrow. This award tonight is the only thing I ever wanted, and thank you for making this possible for me tonight. I want to thank a guy that was... Uh, the guy who gave me my break. Uh, I was writing songs as a kid, and I was playing in a bar band, and we were traveling all over Texas and Oklahoma and New Mexico, Colorado, Kansas, pulling a trailer down the road, a bunch of kids out there making nothing. And a beautiful man got a hold of a cassette, and he heard these songs, and he asked who's singing these songs. And he came into Oklahoma City and found me, and. I played two 45-minute sets of original music. And we were playing in a meat market where you had to play top 40 and hip-hop and country and everything um, to keep the dance floor full or they'd fire you. And I played, I said, I told the bar owner, I said, I'm going to play 45 minutes of my stuff and I'm going to do it again because this guy's in the room. And uh, he signed me to Mercury Records the next day. And his, he discovered Alabama, KT Oslin, Shania Twain, Cyrus, he produced albums on a lot of greats from Glenn Campbell all the way through. And he couldn't be here tonight because he's in the hospital, but tip my hat, Terrell Shedd. As a songwriter, I was a perfect storm, so to speak. Um, my mother sang and my dad had incredible wit being from Oklahoma, he was like Will Rogers. He could sum it up that quick. Ain't as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever was as what my dad used to say. So those things are in my songs. Um, I want to thank my family. I want to thank uh, my mother's here tonight. And <laughs> thanks, man. My wife and uh, Two of my kids are here tonight. They're most, all more beautiful and smarter than I am, but uh, they're all here tonight. Uh, I want to thank my manager of about 20 years, TK Kimbrell. He's fought for me every day. He, hey, for those of you in the room in the music industry, if you've had to deal with TK, he has fought so hard for me that they won't even take his call no more. 
That's how hard he fought. I want to, uh, oh, y'all know Paul Williams was in Smokey and the Bandit, don't you? <laughs> so for you hillbillies that go home and pull out your Smokey and the Bandit thing, Paul Williams is in. <laughs> Little FYI, just putting that in there. That's pretty cool, I think. <laughs> <laughs> what are y'all laughing at? He's a little guy. Uh, I want to thank, uh, first thing I did when I went to Nashville is I walked into town. They said, uh, do you have a publishing deal? And I said, no. And they said, well, you got to have a publisher. I said, all right. And they said, uh, you got to go over and get affiliated. And I walked in BMI one day. And uh, I walked in and they were like, who are you? And I said, I don't know. I'm just, they told me I was supposed to get affiliated. So I'm here. They said, well, go over there and stand. So I, so I stood over a good fricking spell. And they sent another guy out. He sent me to a woman and she sent me on back a little further. And I run into a guy that was younger than me and he pulled me in the office. He goes, what are you, what are you doing back here? I go, they, they made me come back here. I don't want to tell you. What are you doing? I said, I'm trying to get affiliated. <laughs> he said, well, let me go over here and get a sheet that you can affiliate yourself. <laughs> so I filled out the form. I said, what does this mean? He said, that means all your songs will now, you'll get collected for them if you ever have a hit. I said, okay. His name was Clay Bradley. And years later, he was like, you was the biggest shit ass that I ever met. <laughs> he goes, you're my hero. He said, if, he said if, if I can ever talk about being mine, my years of being mine, my famous family, he goes, you're my guy because you just wandered in the back and nobody knew what the hell you was doing back there. <laughs> he said, we thought you was uh, signing up to be a janitor or something. <laughs> Anyway, uh, my grandmother was a, a hero of mine and very important to me. She had a, a nightclub back in the day when nightclubs, uh, supper clubs were um, big bands. She had three-piece horn section. She had a bass player play a little upright, play electric bass, had a drummer on the brushes that would listen to the Cardinal baseball games, and when they would lose, he would get out of time. Had a guitar player, played a big old hollow body Les Paul. And on Wednesday night, that guy had to go to his Masonic Lodge meeting. And my mother, we live in Oklahoma, and she had her borrow in Fort Smith. And, and uh, one summer, my mother, I was the oldest grandson of about 10 or 12 kids. And she said, uh, you want to go, your grandmother was a widow. She goes, do you want to go stay with your uh, grandmother this summer? I said, sure. And she put me, they wouldn't do this today. She put me on a Greyhound bus. It made 22 stops. She goes, here's a lunch, here's five bucks, and do not get off that damn bus till you see your grandmother. <laughs> Stayed the whole summer with her, washed dishes in the back, and would peek out through the window and would watch that band play. And I said, Some, someday, that's what I'm gonna do right there. And on Wednesday night, that dude had his Masonic Lodge meeting and his chair was open and the band would let me go up there and I would sit in, plunk a few chords on the guitar she bought me and and sing and, and act like I knew what I was doing. And then uh, about 15 years, 16 years old, I started watching the guys around me, some guys writing songs, and uh, people were mesmerized. That's how much music can move you. Now, these guys weren't very good. They weren't very good. But they had people mesmerized. They were watching, because music can change the world like that. They can bring people together that you don't know anything about, you have an opinion on. And this music brought everybody together, and I said, man, if I could just do that. So I started writing songs, and thank God and prayer, and thank Harold Shedd, and thank my family, and my, my grandmother, and my mom and my dad, that I stand before you today, and I accept this proud, and this is the only award that I will show in my house right here.